Hi, this is Aaron at ThinkAboutLabs.com and welcome back. Today we're going to set up our magician so that he can cast spells. The first thing that we need to do is grab some particles that we can use for our magic. Looking in the asset store, I came across these magic spells and particles. This is a really awesome package. It comes with a whole lot of different spells and uh, it's only a dollar. And so let's go ahead and get that imported. Alright, and we don't need to download the demo. And we will just grab everything else. As you can see, there's, there's quite a lot in here for the spells. And these are just particle systems. Uh, we'll be rigging up the rest of it. So, Okay, once we get that downloaded, we'll go ahead and close the asset store. Okay, and let's go into this package that we downloaded. And in the magic spells, on quite a few of these, there's a script. It's called the Demo Particle Control. We need to go ahead and remove these. This script sets the start position and rotation of the particle system and we don't want that. We'll be manipulating that through our own code. So go ahead and go through there and make sure that none of the magic spells have this script on there. Alright, so let's check out one of these. Let's grab the fireball and bring it into the scene. You can see that it's got a nice little smoke uh, trail on it. Move it around. So this is going to work out real good. So let's go ahead and uh, delete that and let's get started on setting up our spell manager. We're going to be working with scriptable objects. Just think of them as a class where you can store data in. We're using scriptable objects because not only can we store a great deal of data in them, they'll also help us with memory utilization. I'll put a link in the description that covers the Unity docs on scriptable objects. So in our magician, let's create a new folder called scripts. Let's not add a script, let's create a folder called scripts. And we need to create a base class for our spells. So let's create a new C sharp script and just call it spell. Okay, go ahead and open it up. So with the spell, like I said, we're going to be using uh, scriptable objects. So we're not going to be inheriting from mono behavior, we're going to be inheriting from scriptable object. And with our scriptable object spell, we need a couple things to define. First, let's uh, define the name. And then we need something to store our prefab for our particle system, which we'll be using as a spell. So game object, spell prefab. I'll go ahead and set this to null for the time being. And then let's also create another game object to store the spells um, collision particle system. And we'll go ahead and set that to null. That way we can set up something so on collision detection um, we can kick off another um, particle system to show that the spells exploded or melted or let's set up a an icon for our spells so a texture and let's give it a few stats so public int all spells usually have a mana cost We'll set this to zero and let's do a minimum and maximum damage. And the last one, let's add a speed for our spell. So public int. projectile speed. That way we can say, hey, we want this um, fireball to go, you know, 100 feet per second, or we want this frost bolt to go 1400 feet per second, something like that. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Now we're going to have many spells to keep track of, so let's create a new empty game object in our scene and call it spell manager.
and let's create a new script called spell manager and attach this to that spell manager okay let's go ahead and open it up so for the spell manager the only thing that it needs to do is hold a list of spells so to do that we're going to need a list so public list and this is going to be a list of spells and we'll call this our spell list and this is going to be equal to a new list of spells so this is the only thing the spirit spell manager needs to do it needs to keep a list of the uh, current spells that we have created and we're using and if we go back to our spell manager we can see that now we have an array of um, list items that we can use to add spells to okay now that we have that set up we're going to use an editor script where we can fill out all the spell information and actually create that spell so to do that let's create a new folder in the root of our assets and call it editor let's open it up and let's create a new script in here and this script does have to be put in the editor script that way unity recognizes it as an editor script so we'll call this spell creator and go ahead and open it up all right so to create an editor script we have to have a new using statement and that's going to be using unity editor all right and this is going to be inheriting from the editor window and so to create a menu we need to say menu item and we need to give that menu item a name we'll call our spell maker and we'll give it a sub menu they have to have a sub menu and our sub menu is going to be spell wizard then we need to call a static void in it to initialize this window so static void knit and to create the new window spell creator spell window equals spell creator and then we're going to create an instance type of and this type of is going to be our spell creator and then finally our spell window dot show and we'll be using our spell and our spell manager in here so spell equals a temp spell we'll set that to null and our spell manager equals spell manager and we'll set that to null as well so in our spell window we need to show a GUI window so void on GUI so when the window pops up we need to first see if our spell manager has anything in it so if spell manager equals null spell manager equals game object dot find spell manager which is the empty game object that we created earlier dot get component spell manager so we're going to grid so we're going to get that script that's on it and then if we're creating a spell for the first time we need to say if temp spell so here is where we're going to actually provide ourselves with the options to fill in all of the parameters for the spell so we'll say that our temp spell dot spell name is equal to editor GUI layout dot text field we'll call this text field the spell name 
and we'll be asking for it to fill in our temp spell spell name. Just like that. And then we just need to go through the list of saying temp spell dot spell prefab. So which of our magic spells prefabs are we going to use for this spell? It's going to be equal to game object. And this helps us use a picker editor GUI layout dot object field. We'll name this our spell prefab. And we'll be setting the temp spell dot spell prefab. And then this actually takes a few more parameters. Spell prefab is a type of game object. False. Oh, I almost forgot to uh, zoom this in a little bit so you guys can see. I know there's a few people that had issues seeing this in the last couple, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And so after the spell prefab, we need to go for the spell collision particle. So temp spell dot spell collision particle is equal to game object editor GUI layout dot object field. We'll call this our spell collision effect. And this is also a type of game object false. And what did I miss there? Spell prefab. Oh, forgot to tell it that we need our temp spell spell collision particle. That looks better. So after the collision particle, let me go ahead and open that back up in our scripts, our spell. So after our collision particle, we need our spell icon. So temp spell dot spell icon is equal to a texture 2D editor GUI layout dot object field. It's going to call our spell icon. And we're going to set it to our temp spell dot spell icon, which is a type of texture 2D, comma false. Okay. Then our mana cost, all of our values here. Mana cost, min damage, max damage. So temp spell dot mana cost is equal to editor GUI layout int field mana cost temp spell dot spell mana cost temp spell dot spell minimum damage is equal to editor GUI layout and field minimum damage and that's going to be our temp spell spell minimum damage and then our temp spell spell max damage is equal to header GUI layout int field and then x i m m damage and then temp spell dot spell max damage and the last one is going to be the speed of our projectile. So temp spell dot projectile speed is equal to editor GUI layout and field and then projectile speed. Set this to temp spell projectile speed. Good. Now that we have set all of those values. Let's give it a little space in the editor. Editor GUI layout space. So if we haven't created a spell already, say if 
temp spell if temp spell is equal to null if GUI layout dot button create spell A temp spell is equal to create instance of a spell. 